Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1984 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Blue Jays today is Jimmy Key, whose record is 2-1 with a 3.54 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Brian Kelly, whose record is 4-3 with a 3.92 ERA. Okay, so we took uh, two of three from the Red Sox. We're six and two in the month of June. I feel like uh, we have a stronghold on first place. Uh, we can't really do much more to hold off the Yankees. They're on a stretch right now where they're playing a bunch of, of the uh, B-level teams. And so if we could have uh, two or three, two of three, I'm sorry, it's a four-game series, so three of four would be good against the uh, Blue Jays. Before we face the Yankees at Yankee Stadium, uh, then maybe we can uh, put some real distance between us and the Yankees. Uh, just a quick look at the standings before we get started. Toronto is 32-30. and 30. They're above 500 for the first time in a long time uh, in our sim. And as we illustrated about a week or a week and a half ago, uh, this is a team that retooled itself, and you know, pitching and uh, with their hitters. So um, it'll be interesting to see how we handle them this time around. Our record versus the Blue Jays as of right now this season is four and five. So not that great. We've been struggling a little bit against a team that we should have crushed up until now. So let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like, and or subscribe to the channel. We are going to do a deep dive on Jimmy Key momentarily as we take a look at Brian Kelly. Kelly, it says, has never faced the Blue Jays. I'm not so sure. Uh, all of our bullpen is available today. And then we look at our lineup. It's uh, versus lefties. It's Jimmy Key, the left-hander. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, Trammell and George Brett were both listed as tired. We're going to give Brett the day off today and put Doug Baker at third base, which he's more than capable of handling that position. In fact, he has not committed an error at third base all year. Trammell, we're going to keep in there versus a lefty. He does hit lefties pretty well. Um, Lance Parrish will catch today. And that is all the adjustments we've made. So let's take a look at the new Blue Jays lineup. Batting leadoff, playing third base is Denny Gonzalez. Batting second at shortstop is Rico Rossi. Batting third, playing second base is Vic Rodriguez. Batting cleanup in left field is Antonio Aguilera. Batting fifth in center field is Lloyd Mosby. Batting sixth at DHing is Greg Luzinski. Batting seventh at first base is Willie Upshaw. Batting eighth in catching is Terry McGriff. And batting ninth in right field is Ruben Amaro Jr. Okay, we've got Brian Kelly on the mound. He is making his 12th start. Four and three with a 392 ERA. 45 strikeouts and 66 and two third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 225 against him. He does have a complete game. His fastball tops out at 93 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is around 48%. A three-pitch pitcher. All three are above league average. He is rated an 87 overall. The 25-year-old righty will go to arbitration at the end of next year. He's coming off kind of a bizarre start. He gave up only one run versus Baltimore including three hits, but he walked five and did not strike out anyone the first time this season that he did not get at least one K. Uh, actually, at least two Ks, technically. Uh, he has won two games in a row, and in fact, he has started versus Toronto. He got beat around pretty good. He went four to third, giving up seven runs on seven hits with three walks in that game. He also hit a batter. So not much success versus Toronto for Brian Kelly. Take a look at our defense. Solid all the way around. As I mentioned, we got Baker at third. His defensive rating is the same as George Brett, and yet he has not given up an error at that position. We got Parrish behind the plate in case the Blue Jays think about running. 
Okay, Denny Gonzalez will lead it off versus Brian Kelly. He is a rookie batting 260 with four home runs. He was on the opening day roster. And he goes to right field for a base hit. The leadoff man is on, and Gonzalez has 94 speed, so he could be running. Next man up is Rico Rossi. This is the first time we're seeing Rossi. He replaced Jeff Houston, who was also a rookie. Houston went down to double A. And Rossi hits a fly ball to center to right field. And the catch is made by Wilson. So one out. Gonzalez still thinking about running. Here's Vic Rodriguez. He was the opening day second baseman. And he gets a base hit to center field. Gonzalez goes to third. And that will bring up Antonio Aguilera, a lifetime Mexican League player. He never played in the majors. Uh, they just called him up uh, after a short stint as an 18-year-old with Atlanta. He is now the everyday cleanup hitter on this team. It is first and third, one down. We're going to play back. We'll give up a run. He's got 94 speed anyway. Let's focus on maybe getting a double play. 3-1 count to Aguilera, and Kelly walks the cleanup hitter. So we're off to a terrible start here. Uh, we will call the infield in now as Lloyd Mosby steps up. For whatever reason, he's only batting 215 this year with four home runs and a 206 average versus right-handers. A high fly ball into left center field from Mosby. That will definitely get the run in. And Rodriguez will tag from second and go to third. One nothing Toronto. Two down, first and third, and the bowl, Greg Luzinski, steps up. He is a free agent signing in the offseason, batting 209 with seven home runs. A fly ball to left, and Gibby makes the catch. So we give up a run, strand two, and we go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the Tigers. Lineup rundown. Batting leadoff, playing left field, is Kirk Gibson. Batting second at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting cleanup and DHing is Kenny Smith. Batting fifth and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting sixth at first base is Greg Brock. Batting seventh in center field is Kevin Bass. Batting eighth at second base is Jody Reed. And batting ninth playing third base is Dougie Baker. Okay, Jimmy Key. In real life, this was his rookie year, 1984. He went 4-5 four and five with a 4.65 ERA, and he did not start a game. He pitched all in relief, including having 10 saves in 1984 in real life. Uh, he is a third-round draft pick in 1982 for Toronto out of Clemson University. He's a five-time All-Star, two-time World Series winner in 92 with Toronto and 96 with the New York Yankees. In fact, he won uh, the ERA title in 1987. In 87, he finished second uh, in Cy Young voting with that 276 ERA. Uh, in 1994, a strike-shortened year, we all remember. He won 17 games. That led the American League. And once again, he finished second in the Cy Young voting. He's made 11 playoff starts in his career, going 5-3 and three with a 3.15 ERA. Uh, in 19, oh, I'm sorry, I already covered that. Um, and uh, he finished his career with a with 160, I'm sorry, 186 wins and a 3.51 ERA. So a really solid pitcher in the 80s and 90s. Uh, he is making his fourth start of 1984. He's 2-1 with a 3.54 ERA. 13 strikeouts and 20 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 329 against him. Uh, he does have one complete game this year. His fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 43%. A four-pitch pitcher, but only one pitch is above league average. That's a curveball, which is rated an 85. Overall, he is rated an 84. The 23-year-old lefty is arbitration eligible in 1986. And believe it or not, he would not even be in the rotation 
if it wasn't for Dave Steve being injured. Clearly one of the best rated pitchers on the Toronto staff. Uh, looking at his log, he's made three st starts. He's coming off a big loss to the Yankees in which he gave up six runs in four and two third on 11 hits. Okay, let's take a look at the Blue Jays defense. Pretty horrible everywhere you turn. First, short, third, left field. Say all the outfield, all below league average. It would have been easier for me to tell you who was above average. That's Vic Rodriguez at second base. And McGriff behind the plate. McGriff has an 85 arm, so not someone you technically want to run with. Okay, here we go. Gibby leading off versus Jimmy Key. Lefty on lefty. And Gibson, who's batting 303 versus left-handers. Pops it up into foul ground on the third base side. Out number one. That'll bring up Alan Trammell. As I mentioned, he's tired, but he's batting 328 versus lefty, so we need that bat in the lineup. The ground ball is short. Two quick outs for Jimmy Key. Glenn Wilson with two with two down. He is in the number three spot today. And a ground ball to first. That's a one, two, three inning. For Toronto, 11 pitch at bat though for Wilson. We go to the top of the second and Willie Upshaw will lead off. Upshaw, McGriff, and Amaro Jr. Willie Upshaw hits a ground ball to second where Jody Reed makes the easy play. There's one out. Next up is the catcher, Terry McGriff. A hot shot that gets past Baker at third. McGriff does go to second on a double. Legging it out. 11th double on the year for the rookie, Terry McGriff. Okay, so McGriff is in scoring position for Ruben Amaro Jr. Amaro Jr. betting 274 with no home runs this year. It's a lazy fly ball to left. Gibby has to come in to make the grab. Out number two as McGriff retreats to second. That'll leave it up to Denny Gonzalez. Gonzalez throws and rope to center field, but Bass will make the catch. So we keep the Blue Jays off the board and go to the bottom of the second inning. Here is Kenny Smith. He has lost the uh, home run power. He's still second in the American League behind Kevin Mitchell in home runs. But he still manages to get on base, and it's a home run this time into the right field bleachers. There we go. Smith is off the schneid. His 15th home run of the year. And we're all tied at one. That's lefty on lefty violence. All right, next up is my large adult son, Lance Parrish. An 0-2 count to Parrish. And he is the first victim of a K. Takes strike three looking. One out. Greg Brock. Hits it into the gap into left center field. It will be cut off. We have a potential to go for two here, though. 50-50 shot. The game is tied, and there's only one out. We're going to take the chance. Not a good idea. He is out at second. Damn it. Mosby throws him out. Oh, man. That might be the only run we get today, that home run, now that that's happened. And Bass strikes out. Damn it. Yeah, we. I screwed up. We already know that when we blow it like that, um, there's a tendency for the game to just shut your team down. We go to the top of the third. Here is Rico Rossi. Second and bat of the day. Batting 160. And a ground ball to second. Now, Houston was batting 278 against Detroit. And he had a home run on opening day. So... I'm not sure why they chose to go to, with Rico Rossi unless um, it's an overall rating thing or perhaps uh, they set him down so he doesn't get uh, you know, too many at-bats. Uh, Vic Rodriguez grounds out to short. There's out number two and Antonio Aguilera. Line drive to center. It does get down. It'll get to the wall and Aguilera has a double. All right, Aguilera... His first double of the season. 
Runner in scoring position with two outs for Lloyd Mosby. Le Lloyd 0 for 1 today, and he's going to pop it up into foul territory on the first base side. Brock makes the grab. We go to the bottom of the third, all tied at 1. Here's Jody Reed. Reed is showing some strength against the uh, left-handed bats. He's batting 412. Fly ball into center field. That will be caught by Mosby. One out. Here's Dougie Baker. Pounding it into the dirt in front of home plate. McGriff jumps on it, but cannot pick it up. It's an error against McGriff. So Baker safe at first with one out. We will let Gibson take a cut. He is showing some major power right now looking at his log. Look at that. He's got five home runs in the last five games, not including today. So may as well let the big dog eat. Oh, he slams it into left center field. Will that get down? No, oh, it's going to be caught. I'm assuming by Mosby. It says the left field there, but there's no way that Aguilera is going to get over there and make that catch. Two down. Here is Trammell. Trammell's got a one-two count. He bloops it into right field where the right fielder, Amaro Jr., makes the catch. We cannot capitalize on the error. We go to the top of the fourth. Here is Greg Luzinski. Looks weird in a Blue Jay uniform. But those Phillies, they had the baby blues, right? The powder blues. Base hit into center field. One out. Here is Willie Upshaw. Now keep in mind, Brian Kelly has not struck a batter out in nine innings of baseball. How impossible is that? Even Dave Rosma would have struck somebody out by now. There's a comebacker to Kelly. He goes to second to get the force. It was Luz Luzinski running. One out here is Terry McGriff. McGriff had that double. Last time up, and he gets a base hit. So. All right. Well, six hits. Um, he's given up the hits today, not the walks. That's the difference. He had eight, nine with the hit-by-pitch uh, base runners in six and the third innings last time. So he's almost reached that peak. Um, what do we do here? It's up shop. We'll bring the corners in. It's not like we've seen a lot of ground balls today. 2-1 count to Amaro, and Amaro gets jammed inside. That's the first good sidearm curve today from Kelly. He's on the verge of getting out of this inning. I hope I didn't jinx them. Here we go. First and third. Playing back. 1-1 one, one count to Gonzalez. And a fly ball to center. Bass will make the catch. Moving on to the bottom of the fourth. Glenn Wilson leading off. Wilson is just not hitting lefties. Batting 192 so far this year. Popping it up to first. Tigers are being two hit by Jimmy Key. Here's Kenny Smith. He accounts for uh, half the hits and the only run today. He strikes him out. Third K for Jimmy Key. And Lance Parrish struck out the first time. Here he hits a ground ball to third. And that will do it. We're going to the top of the fifth. Brian Kelly is at 59 pitches, so he's been efficient. At least he's finding the plate today. A 1-2 count to Rossi. Ground ball to third, and Baker keeps the errorless streak alive. One down, and then he walks Rodriguez. Runner on first. Will Kelly ever strike out another batter? Tough to say. Ground ball to third from Aguilera. And a double play will end the inning. 5-4-3 around the horn. We go to the bottom of the fifth. One all. And the Brock Ness Monster leading off. It's Brock, Bass, and Reed. And a base hit for Greg Brock. He goes oppo to left field. 
He's two for two on the day. We were not going to go for a double that time. In fact, I'm actually very pleased that since we made that base running blunder, that we have not given up another run. So we're going to try to be aggressive in a different way. Let's see if we can get the hit and run going with Kevin Big Hit Bass. Oh, it's an automatic stolen base somehow. That's lame as hell. That is Brock's first stolen base of the year. Something we don't expect them to do. But we'll take it as Brock's in scoring position. Nobody out. And we'll try to hit, have uh, Kevin Bass go to, to uh, right field. He does. Goes to the right side anyway. Which allows Brock to move to third. Jody Reed will have him uh, try to make some solid contact here and Brock will be running. Reed's a good contact hitter. Put the ball in play, we take the lead. There we go, ground ball to second. Brock will score and it's two to one, Detroit. Give Reed an RBI. Doug Baker with two down. Bays hit the right field, it's the bottom of the lineup getting it done. Do we want to go for two? We do not. Baker, fourth hit of the ball game for the Tigers. This is Baker's on first. Kirk Gibson will take a walk. There's the first walk issued by Key. This is the time to come through. Trammell's 0 for 2 today. Has looked unsteady at the plate. 1-1 one, one count. And a base hit to right field. Baker will score easily. It's 3-1 Detroit. Gibson standing up at third. Give Trammell an RBI. And Glenn Wilson, this is a guy you want to have in this position. He's had eight RBI in the last ten games. And a slow roller to first. And that will end the inning. We go to the top of the sixth. 3-1 Detroit. I want to see Kelly give us one more inning here. He's only thrown 73 pitches. And he's got a little bit of room to work with. It's a 1-0 count to Mosby, who gets a base at the left. Uh, we may have made a mistake here. As one swing of the bat from the bull will tie it up. Mosby steals second. Um, I'm not really concerned about that other than it takes the double play away. Only the fourth stolen base for Mosby this season. Okay, focus on the batter now. It's, oh, it's an 0-1 oh count. This would be a good time to get the first strikeout. 1-1 one, one count. And a base hit the center field. All right, well. Oh, Mosby does not score? That is a strategic thing by this game. I have a feeling we're going to see a three-run home run right now. 2-2 two, two count. Oh, there's the first K. It's up, Shaw. Strikes out. So I was way off. Take a strike out over a three-run home run. Terry McGriff, we're going to play back. If that run scores, so be it. Try to turn two with Luzinski and the catcher. 2-1 count to McGriff. And a ground ball. Taylor made double play. That will end the inning. 6-4-3. We go to the bottom of the sixth. A good performance today from Kelly. That'll probably be all we ask of him. Here's Ken Smith. He's had a home run and struck out today. Slow roller to third. Play made by Gonzalez. One out. Lance Parrish 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. Still only batting 188 on the year. A tapper back to Jimmy Key. There's out number 2. It is odd that the Blue Jays have two stolen bases off of Parrish today. That seems highly unlikely. unlikely. And with two down, Greg Brock pops it up. All right, so we're going to make the call to the pen. Brian Kelly pitched 87 pitches. Not a ton, but he leads with the lead. We've got a switch hitter and two righties coming up. 
Let's bring in Roy Thomas. Roy Thomas, this is his first appearance since he threw three and two-third, giving up one hit and one walk with two strikeouts in that game versus Boston. He got the win in that ball game. He's 5-1 and one on the year with a 205 ERA. Opponents are batting only 147 against him. That's all-star caliber right there. Okay, let's focus on Ruben Amaro Jr. He's going to bat left-handed. 286 hitter versus righties. Ground ball to Reed. Plays made. There's out number one. Back to the top of the lineup. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. There you have it. Gonzalez one for three today. First time facing Thomas. And that's a bloop single in the left center field. Little duck snort. Finds a home. Gonzalez on first. He's got great speed. Again, I'm not really concerned about them stealing. Let's just go after the batter. Rossi batting only 100 versus righties. There's a strikeout. Thomas' first K. Two down, and Vic Rodriguez, one for two with a walk today. First pitch swinging. No, actually, Gonzalez was going, and Parrish guns him down. One for three with base stealing today. We go to the bottom of the seventh. It feels like Toronto is trying to give us this one. We got the bottom third of the lineup. Jimmy Key at 84 pitches. And Kevin Bass leading off. Bass, base hit the left field. Yes, we're going for two, you son of a bitch. Yeah, there we go, Kevin Bass. Gets a double. That was a big risk. His sixth double of the year. Um, I didn't take any time to think about it. It was an impulse. Like when I buy bubble gum at the uh, supermarket. Um, we have a runner at second. And Jody Reed at the plate. 1-0 count. And a blooper to right field. That's going to carry deep enough to be caught. Bass is going to tag on his own. And go to third. Um, let's go ahead and go on contact once again with Bass on third. Oh, no, an 0-2 count. Oh, he does make contact, but that's not going to get it done. High pop-up into shallow left field. It shows that the shortstop went back to make the catch, but that's a lot of distance for Rossi to cover. Two down, runners on runner on third, and Kirk Gibson's up. Gibson's over two with a walk. Be great to get an insurance run here. And a slow roller to short, and that's an easy play. As we go to the top of the eighth inning. Okay, let's um take Roy Thomas out. We will bring in Carl Willis. Carl. I always try to say Carl, like uh, the, uh, the guy in The Walking the Dead when he was talking to his son, Carl. 18th game, 0-1 with a 5.51 ERA. Opponents are betting 2.62 against him. Uh, he's got 9 strikeouts and 8 walks and 16 and a third. He has just not looked good this year. He doesn't look right. You set him down. Called him back up not too long ago, and he's given up. Two runs in his last six performances. So let's see how he does today. Here's Vic Rodriguez leading it off. 1 0 count. Ground ball to third. Baker makes the play. Man, I was thinking there's the first error. You might have been thinking that too. You know, I didn't realize Aguilera is a switch hitter. This is uh, him in his uh, Mexican league jersey now i don't know if this is a player's uniform or player's photo i should say or a manager's photo so i i, I dug it up but I, I couldn't get a, a reference for it aguilera goes to left field for out number two and that will leave it up to lloyd lloyd mosby 
One for two today with an RBI, driven in the only run for the Blue Jays. And Willis will pitch himself a scoreless eighth inning. We go to the bottom half. Three to one, Detroit. Here's Trammell. One for three with an RBI. There we go. Base hit the center field. Get down. Get to the wall. Trammell has a double. Good job by Allen. That is his 13th double of the season. Where has his power gone? I wonder aloud to no one in particular. So this is one of those games where we've had the leadoff guy on quite a bit. 100 pitches now for Jimmy Keat. Here is Glenn Wilson. Wilson couldn't lay off that outside pitch. Flips it to right, and Trammell will take third. Runner at third, less than two outs. I really like our chances here with Ken Smith. He's one for three with a home run and a strikeout, and I don't know for sure if he is now, but he was at one point leading the American League in sack flies this year. That's what we're going to ask of him this time. A ground ball to third. Trammell does score. So give the RBI to Ken Smith. And it's 4-1 to Detroit. Two down for Parrish. He's 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Key is now officially tired. And Parrish will ground out to first. So we're moving on to the ninth inning. Time to bring in the closer. It is Dave Smith. This guy is a wild man on the mound these days. You never know what's going to happen. 28th appearance already. He's 1-2. A 233 ERA. 24 strikeouts and 27 innings pitched. Opponents are betting 250. 13 saves. 4 blueies. You pretty much know the rest. If you look at his log, you'll see that he's had four scoreless appearances that have resulted into two saves, but none of those we felt good about. And he's going to have to face Luzinski, Upshaw, and McGriff here in the ninth inning. Will the game give them some junk runs? We'll find out. 2-0 count to the bolt. Ground ball up the middle. Tremel makes the play. One out. Next man up is Willie Upshaw. Full count, and he walks Upshaw. So will there be a two-run home run is the question. We're not going to guard the lines. 2-2 Two -two count to McGriff. Good job by Smith pulling the string on that sinker. And we're down to our final out. It could be Ruben Amaro Jr., who was hitless today, 0 for 3. And he strikes him out to finish off the ball game. That was a solid performance from Dave Smith. Tigers win 4-1. to one. Handshakes, butt slaps, slappy steaks. Okay, uh, it's simulating. We'll see if there's any trade offers. There is a trade offer. The Rangers, interesting, they want Jesse Barfield, and in return, they're going to give us Charlie Huff and the Schlubs. Yeah, none of this looks good. Um, let's, t let's take a look at Charlie Huff. He makes a ton of money, uh, and that does not interest me. He's already 36 years old. I mean, he played until he was 45 or something, right? So, I mean, he's got a long way to go. But you can't really start him because of his endurance. It would be fun to have a knuckleballer. And I'm inclined to consider that uh, just to have that as <laughs> something to mix stuff up. But we're going to say no. Thank you, but no thank you. Let's take a look at the standings. Tigers are now three and a half up as the Yankees lose. So does Boston. So does Toronto. So does Baltimore. And uh, Seattle is a still a half game up on Oaktown. Philadelphia seven and a half up. Cincinnati eight up. I mean, some of these races could be over by j the All-Star game. Let's take a look at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Azador knocks in four in a 7-2 victory. He hit a home run and had four RBI. And he only had one hit 
So maybe that was a grand slam. Greg Tubbs went one to for four with a walk and a stolen base. Tigers expand their lead to three and a half over the Yankees. There's a lot to see there. Moving on to transactions. The only thing of note today is Bill Gullickson of Montreal is going to miss two weeks. He is their best pitcher, and Montreal has suffered a ton of injuries this year. All right, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's nothing new for us to consider until we get to the trade deadline, which is July 31st. Um, usually at the beginning of July, I really start wheeling and dealing uh, if we're going to be in it, which we're clearly going to be in it. The player of the game is Ken Smith. Um, he did not have the game-winning RBI, but he did hit the big bomb uh, that got us tied with the, uh, the Blue Jays, and then we just chipped away the rest of the way to, to the victory. That was his 15th home run. Brian Kelly, a interesting and uh, effective win. He is now 5-3, and three, uh, giving up one run today in six innings. Did not, oh, no, he did strike out one batter. And Dave Smith gets his 14th save. Jimmy Key gets a loss. He's 2-2 two and two on the year. Okay, that's it. We're going to come back tomorrow with the second game of the four-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.